Shalom Kulam. Um, thank you to Ronnie for setting up the conference. I remember meeting her about a year ago and, uh, and we were just talking about this idea and, and it's incredible to be back here and, and see this energy. I had a mentor once who told me the secret to business and he just said, follow the energy, Zil. And, um, and this room is where it's at, so that's amazing. Uh, we're in the right place. I uh, also wanted to acknowledge the speakers that have come before me. Uh, there's a saying that we stand on the, the shoulders of the giants that have come before us. And, you know, to have Ronald Cohen and Jimmy Perez and Eitan Stibber and all the other, Robert Rubenstein, all these other amazing speakers, both here and in the industry, I feel somewhat as that next generation coming through, it's really the work that they've done that have put us in good stead. So I guess I'll tell you a little bit about my story um, and I'll start with a question and we'll see, this is also your chance to stretch, I'll ask you to put your hand up, but, um, but we'll see how many do. Um, let's say I give one person here $5,000, okay? And on the other side I give this group a million dollars, a million dollars to chop down as many trees as you can and $5,000 to protect those trees. <laughs> Who thinks they're going to win that battle? Yoffi, there are a few people, it's a tough job. And we've been doing that for a long time already. And in a sense, that was really the dilemma that my wife and I had. We try and live our life through our values. We care a lot about a lot of different issues. And we saw ourselves doing philanthropy with that small percentage to try and make a change. But of course, the money was being earned through businesses that in some instances were actually causing the problems that we were trying to solve. And we realised in the end that this battle, we're never going to be able to win through philanthropy alone. For example, we work a lot in poverty, but we're invested across the world in a banking system that won't lend to poor people. We're trying to solve climate change. We're invested in fossil fuels and oil. We're trying to bring gender equality across the world. Yet when we looked at our portfolio investments, we realised that women made up almost none of the leadership positions and the board positions of the companies that we were investing in. So we realised that this was an incredible dilemma that we had to try and solve. Philanthropy versus business. And we decided that the answer to that was not to try and see if we could win with that small amount of philanthropy against the large forces of business, but rather bring them together. Not all business is negative, and I've written their money is not neutral. Not all business is negative. But Edmund Burke once said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to remain silent. And Elie Wiesel also said, neutrality always helps the oppressor, but never the oppressed. And we realised that that's what was happening with our money. Some of our investments were actually causing harm, but even those that weren't causing harm we're not actually supporting. So we decided to shift the way we invest and we started to look at a screen. And instead of a negative screen, we actually created a positive screen. Instead of companies that are not doing bad, we asked the question, how can we invest in companies that are actually doing good? It wasn't an easy process. It wasn't fast. It's complicated. Um, it's delicate. There are family issues. We come from a family of wealth. So we had to deal with family politics with values that aren't shared across all the family, necessarily. Sometimes you have exits that you're waiting for. Sometimes you own a building, you can't just sell the building immediately. You can't sell your share of an investment. So all these things took a long time. You've also got pipeline opportunities. When we started this uh, nearly 10 years ago, there wasn't much in the way of a positive impact investment pipeline. So we had all these problems that we had to try and deal with. And 10 years down the track, or almost 10 years down the track, we're nearly there. So let me tell you, checking my time, let me tell you a little bit about the process. And as I tell you a little bit about our process, I'm hoping you can take a little bit of this on for yourselves. And by the way, this is not just for people with great wealth. This is for everyone, because everyone, whether you've got wealth to invest or you're just spending your salary, every dollar that we spend is a vote. Every dollar that we spend goes to something, whether we buy Coca-Cola, whether we buy McDonald's, or whether we buy an organic uh, hummus uh, pita in Israel. 
Um, so the first part, this is the simple two-step process to becoming an all-in impact investor. And we term it all-in. Ronnie, when she introduced, spoke about this 100%, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But we sort of consider it an all-in. Right? From our perspective, all of our capital is invested with this same lens. It's not just a portion of it, it's the entire thing. And it's not just uh, philanthropic capital, it's our entire wealth. So we're going to Bali on a holiday in a couple of months. If our portfolio doesn't do well, that jeopardises the holiday. So we, we can't afford not to do well on this. So what's the process of becoming an impact investor, an all-in impact investor? The first one, which I think is true um, for everyone, and, and maybe we don't focus enough on this in schools, is to know who you are. What do you believe? What do you value? What do you care about? What are you passionate about? What do you love doing? What are the causes that you're trying to influence? And most people in this room have started to ask this question, but I'd encourage you to sit down, whether it's with your family or your, your investment advisors, and work through a process of actually coming up with the things that you really care about. Who are you? What's the intention? Because without intention, uh, the impact is fleeting. And then step two, this is a really simple process. It's taken us nine years and we're about a third of the way there, okay? Step two, once you understand a little bit about who you are and what you're trying to achieve, how do we align our actions with our values? And for us, it was also how do we align our assets with our values? And for us, we came up with these few different questions, which we start as that screen. Remember I mentioned before you begin investing, or sorry, we, we, we change the way we invest, the paradigm of our investing, to use a different screen. So before we invest, we look at these questions. Is it good for people? Is it good for the environment? Is this the world we want to create, the world we want to leave to our children? And the last one is a question, a financial question, but also a very personal question, how much is enough? And for my wife and I, we even sat together and kept a budget and tried to have a look. What do we need to live the life we want to live? That's a very interesting question because for some people the answer of how much is enough might be never enough. But I think that's one of the diseases that we have in our society. We have to start making a decision on what it is that we want. And only when you ask yourself those first questions can you ultimately answer that. For us, we came up with a number as well as a number to run our business and realised that that was the minimum targeted return. Below that, obviously, we were unsustainable. Above that... We were above sustainability. Um, and with that, by the way, we're not against above sustainability because, of course, if you make more through positive social and environmental investments, it just means you can invest more or you can donate more on the other side. You can do more impact. So we definitely try and outperform our minimum target, but we know what our minimum is, and that is crucial. And then what we did is we took it to our entire portfolio. What I said, we, we're not sort of carving out, and I loved the earlier slide of that carve out for impact investment, that, that paper thin slice of, of zero or 1% for impact. And, and we decided we'll take that entire pool of 100%. But if we're going to do that on our portfolio, we need to look across a total impact, a total portfolio approach. So what I've done is I've put it up here. I'm not going to go through each of them. But what I've tried to do is give examples of a few different asset classes and a few different examples of where you might find those impact investments. And on the end, uh, specific examples of some investments that you could make in each one of those. In cash, ask yourself, which bank is the bank that you want to invest in? Which bank is most aligned to your values? And my, my, my question to you is not, it's not, are your values aligned with my values? Each one of us will come up with our own. If you care about women, if you care about Israel, Right? Where does that fit into your investment strategy? If you care about peace, if you care about um, education, all these things will fit into your strategy. The question of going to impact investment is firstly asking what do you care about? So in this particular case, we looked at the banks that we were putting our money in, our term deposits, and started choosing the community-based banks, the cooperative banks, the banks that were aligned with our values. On bonds, we heard Sir Ronald Cohen talk about social impact bonds, an incredible, incredible opportunity um, for investments. There are green bonds in Australia. NAB is one of our big banks, like Apoalim, and they launched a couple of months ago a green bond. I was sitting with one of the, um, one of the leaders of the bank and talking about impact and trying to convince him that this is a good idea. And I said, you know, you can do green property right, or renewable energy. He said, we already do. 
He said, we've got over a trillion dollars of assets. I'm sure we've got five or 10 billion that would count in your impact. I said, you probably do, but you couldn't tell me which ones they are. They're neither intentional, which is what Abigail was talking about before, and they're not measured. So he went away and he trumped me absolutely by launching this green bond with 18 wind farms around Australia. They raised $300 million in under 24 hours for this green bond. In Seed and Venture, we've heard about, Achemi Perez has mentioned all the opportunities in Israel as a startup nation. Private equity, you can find things like B corporations. If you haven't heard about it, it's incredible. You've got to write it down, you've got to Google it. B corporation is basically a stamp on a business that shares the values of the people in this room. It's incredible. And it reduces our due diligence time immensely. So instead of trying to work out whether this, value, this company is aligned, we just look and see, are they a B corporation? If they are, they're in. You've got public equities and you can see in there things like Tesla, we need more sustainability indexes, we need more impact indexes. Green property funds, we started a, a fund in Australia called IIG Impact Investment Group in the last two years and this is all about 100% invested in impact. We've raised over $200 million we have over $200 million of assets with over 200 investors. And this is mainly through green property and now we're starting to expand to renewable energy. This is enormous and anyone who says to me, you can't find opportunities across your portfolio, you're dreaming. And the last part is it's not just us. There's a whole global group, a global network of people called the 100% Impact Network. And these are people like us who have committed all of our wealth to impact. We've sort of said, although it's a journey and it'll take us some time, this is the target. The target is not a little bit, it's everything. And this group of, at the moment, over 60 people, you know, over $3 billion together invested in impact so far and a whole lot more committed. A lot of us are still on our journey um, and growing all the time. This group is the group that I'm encouraging each of you to join, whether you've got a little bit or a lot to try and see whether we can come together and actually make, this, make the energy in the room the energy of the world. So join me in 100%. Thank you. <laughs>